Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering problem one from our dynamic programming series for a problem entitled Equal. And I want to say right off the top of this video that this solution, uh, to my knowledge, doesn't actually require any dynamic programming, but it is listed in the hacker rank dynamic programming uh, practice section. So that's why this video is titled Dynamic Programming Problem One, because I want to be consistent with what hacker rank uh, states, but if you feel like this is misleading, uh, I apologize for that. The problem states, Christy is interning at HackerRank. One day she has to distribute some chocolates to her colleagues. She is biased towards her friends and plans to give them more than the others. One of the program managers hears of this and tells her to make sure everyone gets the same number. To make things difficult, she must equalize the number of chocolates in a series of operations. For each operation, she can give one, two, or five chocolates to all but one colleague. Everyone who gets chocolates in a round receives the same number of pieces. For example, assume the starting distribution is 115. She can give two bars to the first two and the distribution will be 335 and on the next round she gives the same two, two bars each, and everyone has the same number now, 5, 5, and 5. Giving a starting distribution, calculate the minimum number of operations needed so that every colleague has the same number of chocolates. And note that the constraints for this problem are that T is going to be between 1 and 100 and N is going to be between 1 and 10 thousand and uh, the number of initial chocolates for each colleague is going to be less than a thousand. So let's take a look at one of the examples that HackerRank provided us with. So in this example we're given t which is the test case is just one and that four the number of people is going to or the number of people is four and then we have our starting distribution. So this means that the first two people have two chocolates and the last two have three and seven respectively. So this looks like follows and so basically what the question's asking us to do is to uh, for each sort of operation, choose every single person except for one and then add the same number of chocolates to their totals. And we can add either one, two, or five. And uh, for this problem, the answer is two, and we're going to achieve that by first choosing uh, the first, second, and fourth individual and adding uh, one to their totals, and that's going to give us three, 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 and eight. And then we can pretty obviously choose the first three individuals and add five to their totals, and that'll bring everyone to eight. Uh, so by these sort of operations, plus one to everyone but the second individual, and then plus five to everyone but the fourth individual, we can get every single individual having the same number of chocolates. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward to understand what the problem is asking, but the solution's not uh, immediately clear. So there's a number of things that we need to recognize about this problem. And the first is that uh, subtracting a chocolate from one person is the same to adding to all of them except for one. Uh, so here we were sort of choosing, you know, if because we have four people, we were choosing three of them and then adding a number to it. But we can change this plus one and plus five to a minus one and minus five and then just apply that operation to the person that was left out. And we can see this from the following. So you can see here we've changed our pluses to minuses and removed the sort of not. And so the first operation is now subtracting one from our third individual, and that's going to bring them down from three to two. And then for our last operation, we're just applying a minus five to the fourth individual. So you can see it's just sort of the uh, antithesis of what we were doing before, but it still results in the same number of operations and the same end goal, which is each individual still having the same number of uh, chocolates. So that's the first thing we need to note. And once we've uh, made note of this, it, it simplifies the problem quite a bit. The second thing we need to note is that you can get to any number due to the fact that we have a plus one operation or a minus one sort of in our altered version of the problem that we've created, which means that, you know, whatever we choose our target to be, we can, we know we can get to that number. So if we didn't have the plus one, that doesn't, that means we can't necessarily get to every single number uh, because we don't have uh, the smallest units sort of of our, our change. But due to the fact that we have plus one, we can. And so that leads us to the, the next fact that we should aim for the minimum number. So because we're thinking of this problem as sort of reducing everyone to the same number of chocolates, we should aim for the minimum because that will uh, give us the uh, smallest number of operations that we need to apply in sort of in, in order to meet our end condition of them all having the same. Um, but you might say that, you know, how do we know that this actually leads to the optimal solution? And the answer is, is that sometimes the minimum uh, will not be optimal. Um, 
That's a spelling mistake there. But it will be somewhere between the minimum and the minimum minus four. And so what does this mean? That means that uh, sometimes if we target the minimum number of chocolates that someone has, uh, that will result in the correct solution, but other times it won't. So how can we see this? So if we take a look at a different example where we still have four people, but the starting distribution is two, six, six, and six. If we just aim for the minimum, uh, we're gonna get there by uh, subtracting two twice from each of the last three people. So uh, six minus two gets you to four, which then gets you to two. So uh, two operations for each individual gets us there in uh, six moves. Um, but what we can note that if we reset this and before we start modifying these three values, we subtract one from our first individual, then we can subtract uh, five from our last three, which will be uh, one operation for each of these three and then just one for the first individual, which results in four operations, which is less than six. Uh, so we don't necessarily need to know whether the minimum or the minimum minus one or the minimum minus two, uh, which one of those is optimal. We just need to check minimum and minimum minus one, minus two, minus three, and uh, minus four. And we know that at this minimum minus four, that's the sort of the furthest away from the minimum that could end up end up being the optimal solution because once we do minus five uh, we're sort of back to our original state because we have this plus five operation um, so we only need to check minimum and the values in between that up to minimum minus four and once we sort of check each one of these targets we know that one of them will be optimal so we can just calculate all five of them and then take the minimum of those uh, five sort of op operation counts. Um, so that's basically everything you need to know in order to solve this problem. So what is, that's going to result in is we're just going to loop through all of our individuals and we are going to uh, calculate the difference between the number of chocolates they're starting with and the current target, which will be either the minimum or minimum minus four, somewhere in between there. And we're going to just remove five while we can, because that's going to result in the least number of operations, and then remove two while we can, and then remove one. And that will result in uh, finding the optimal or the minimum number of operations in order to meet our criteria of every individual having the same number of chocolates. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at our code for this problem. So here's our solution. We have our function equal that takes a vector of integers a representing the distribution of the number of chocolates that each individual has and it returns an integer uh, which will be the minimum number of operations to uh, apply to our array such that we meet our condition. So the first thing we do at the top of our function is we get the minimum uh, number of chocolates and we can just use this by making a call to our min element and passing in our array iterators. Uh, once we do that, we can set our answer, which will return at the end of this function to be just a maximum value of uh, our integers. You can set this several ways, uh, but I like to use the numeric limits as it's the most clear. And uh, then we come into our for loop, which is just going to uh, be looping through 0 to 4, which is going to represent that offset that we're applying to the minimum that we calculated earlier. Uh, then for uh, each of our iterations, we're declaring this lambda, which is going to uh, be passed into our, our accumulate function. And between the two of these, we're going to calculate the total number of operations that need to be applied to our distribution. So this is passing in uh, the minimum value and our offset. And uh, then we're passing in the auto init, which is just going to be an, an integer uh, that keeps track of sort of the running sum of our operations. And then auto j, which is going to be the number of chocolates for the current individual that our accumulate algorithm is operating on. So we calculate our uh, sort of target here by just subtracting, uh, or this is not our, our target is a min underscore minus i, and then j is the number of chocolates. So that the individual has. So when we take the difference of this, this is how many chocolates we need to sort of uh, get rid of in order to make them equal our current target. And so we can calculate um, the number of operations by this amount, sort of that difference divided by five, and then the remainder of that divided by two, and then the remainder of that divided by one. The one here, obviously, we don't need to actually put because anything divided by one is just it itself. So this sort of uh, you know complicated equation of division and modulus operators will give us the number of operations to get from our uh, number of chocolates to the target number of chocolates. 
And uh, if we pass this lambda to our accumulate algorithm, it's basically just going to sum up this uh, calculation performed for each individual. And so you can see that this accumulate function is being called inside a min function, which is basically just resetting our answer to be the minimum of our previously calculated answer for our previous targets and the current calculated uh, answer. And uh, once we do this for sort of our, each of our five targets, minimum and minimum minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four, we can just return our answer and that will give you uh, a correct solution. So the last thing to talk about for this problem is the time complexity, which is going to be uh, linear because uh, we are calling accumulate, which is linear, and we're calling it five times, but we drop the constant and our uh, calculations that we're doing inside our lambda expression are also constant. And also, just to note, if you're going to try using this code in HackerRank, make sure that you have the C++14 uh, compiler option turned on because, uh, as mentioned in previous videos, when you use auto in these, auto in these lambdas, um, that's, uh, that makes it a generic lambda, which is only supported in C++14, not C++11. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.